into what religion is, our morals will be stripped. Well, they're setting it up for you guys, the younger generation, to take the hit. They see a church that's on fire for God. Mm -hmm. That's the church that gets targeted. You're in the worship saying, praise Jesus. We are the army of God. We'll dare to discuss what most churches never will and strive always to speak the truth in love. We are watchmen, warriors, victors. I hear a different drum. Together, we will fight the good fight and finish strong. This is David Hebner Live. Hey everybody, good to be with you, David here. Hey, um, <laughs> it's that time of year. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting sinuses. It's like, so if you hear my voice, you'll know I'm not turning into Rod Stewart. Uh, I'm turning into uh, a sinus um, monster here. So I don't want to drool all over you, but so good to have you here. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Spencer, have you, do you have sinuses? Have you ever had a problem with sinuses, Spencer. Oh yeah, seasonally have issues. You had a sore throat and all that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah. Somebody said if you drink a glass of wine, that it'll make it go away. Especially if you drink two or three glasses. Well, it won't go away, but you probably won't feel it, right? I got to be careful about drinking wine because every time I bring that up, people go, "Don't talk about drinking wine." I go, "But Jesus drank wine." Oh, I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to unsubscribe. And I'm, I'm going to have to have a show on that, Spencer. That, uh, you know, I'm not saying Jesus was a glutton. I'm saying that they drank wine back then. I mean, do you think it's okay for us to drink wine now? I, I prefer not to touch it. That's my, my thing. You've never, you've never tested it? No, sir. If I, ne if I never touch it, I'll never have an issue with it. You've never... Put alcohol to your lips? Not except mouthwash. Wow. Are you kidding me? You and you and Trump? <laughs> Never put alcohol to well maybe I put enough for the both of us. Back before back when I was a brain dead Christian. Back before I was a Christian. Back well, not even that. Yeah, I was a brain dead Christian. But anyway, I uh, love you guys, appreciate you all. Uh, hey, uh, DavidHevener.tv, go subscribe right now. If you haven't, you can watch us free. Okay, that's our membership platform. I love you all. I appreciate you. All right, the world's going crazy. Now, I I'm going to read something to you. And this is going, I, I, matter of fact, I couldn't write a script with this sentence. If I did, they would send it back to me and say, Hevener, no one would believe this. So, Spencer, let's go to, uh, this is breaking Christian news. Let's go to, we have this up. Wisconsin official arrested for child pornography is a drag nun who victimized adopted son. Federal prosecutors have taken over the case involving against Wisconsin County Human Resource Director Adam Westbrook and charged him with activities related to material constituted child pornography. I got to stop right there. We've got a, an official, someone that's official, works for the government. And not only that, but they're a drag nun. I'm going to find out what a drag nun is. I can't imagine that's supported by the Catholic Church. And victimizes their adopted son. I guess this guy's a homosexual, so I'm sure he's got a husband. We're going to read and find out. So they adopt a son, they victimize him. It's going down here. Police identified the victim of a Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence drag queen who was arrested earlier this week on four counts each of possession of child pornography and sexual exploitation of a child as the man's young adopted son whom he shares with, there you go, with his husband. Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence? <laughs> what is that? I got to find out what that is. Click on that, Spencer. That's a live link. Let's, let's go to Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Abby of the Bruce, 
Bruce City Sisters. The Abbey of the Bruce City Sisters is a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing information to at-risk individuals and youth regarding critical health and community issues through outreach. I stop. I'm not, I got it. Forget it. All right. We're going to go back. I got it. So here's a guy who's got a nonprofit. He dresses up like a nun. Drag queen nun. Adopts a son. Molests him. Sends out pornographic pictures of him. And yet he's got a nonprofit that's supposed to take care of people. The world's gone crazy. The original eight counts against Wisconsin County Human Resources Director Adam Westbrook. <laughs> Wisconsin County Human Resources. I, I, yeah, he's got a lot of human resources, all right. He's using all of his resources to do inhuman things. Uh, the, um, the eight counts were dismissed with federal prosecutors in Madison now taking over the case. You mean something was dismissed? Spencer, is that what that says? It was dismissed? Are you kidding me? It was dismissed and now they took it up. How could somebody dismiss that? That's crazy. Charging him with activities related to material constituted child pornography. The boy seen in the videos made by Westbrook is described in the original criminal complaint. On, um, the boy seen in the video about Westbrook is described in the original criminal complaint only as a boy engaged in sexually explicit con uh, conduct, according to a report by local news outlet Fox 11. The shocking news about the sexual exploitation of the boy entrusted to Westbrook's care first came to light in a series of ex posts by talk show host Dan O'Connell. So I guess this guy, Dan O'Connell, has a channel on X, which is uh, formerly Twitter. Uh, thank goodness it got bought out by Elon Musk. Uh, and I guess he exposed it. He exposed it. Can you click on that picture down there to the left? It looks like dressed up as a bunch of clowns. Are you kidding me? What, what in the world? That's unbelievable. According to a state criminal complaint, Westbrook took naked vote, uh, videos of his adoptive son and sent them to a friend, a sheriff deputy who was arrested for getting his jollies in front of another man in public bathroom. What a pervert. So here's a guy cross-dresses, he's a nun cross-dresser, married to a guy, adopts a kid, takes sexually explicit videos of him, sends it to a, a sheriff's deputy who's arrested for getting his jollies off in front of a man in a public bathroom. Investigators found four videos on the of the boy on the deputy's phone and traced them to Westbrook, who allegedly took uh, them while on a trip to the Wisconsin Dells with his husband and their adoptive. The world's gone crazy. I mean, I, you know, I'm reading this stuff, folks. You can't make this stuff up. You just can't make it up. This is how perverted the world has gotten. But you know what really bothers me is that no one is raising Cain about this. Where are the preachers in the pulpit? Are they preaching against this? Are they talking about it? Are they exposing it? So you see, it, not only are people crazy, they've gone crazy, but the people that are supposed to be the watchers, they're not watching. Well, maybe they're watching, but they're not warning. If this would have been 50 years ago, you'd have had guys, you know, Johnny, get your gun. I mean, they'd be raising all kinds of cane. But now it's people, they're, they're just brain dead, especially the preachers. All right, what are we talking about? I had a dream the other night. This is why I'm doing this particular show on this particular topic. I had a dream. It was about an older lady. She must have been 70-something. But she was over in a corner in an alley crying, just, just crying her heart out. And I walked over to the lady. It was so vivid. I can see it now. 
And she was just crying. She was crying uncontrollably, had her back turned to me, squatted down next to a dumpster in the alley. I said, ma'am, I said, are you okay? Can I help you? And she just cried. And she turned around. She looked at me with tears in her eyes. I'll never forget those eyes. She said, people are talking about the end times. She said, you talk about the end times. She said, but I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Nobody's telling me what to do. Nobody's helping me. I'm scared. And folks, that affected me because I never want to be in a place where I bring up an issue, but we can't let God resolve it. That God doesn't have an answer in Scripture when God does have an answer in Scripture. And that's why I'm doing this tonight, prophecy, end times specifically. I talk a lot about it. I have DVDs on it. I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of guests, people that have devoted their life to end time prophecy. But what is prophecy? What, what I'm going to do in this period of time, God help us, lead us, guide us through this, is I want to identify what prophecy is, why God has given us prophecy, what does it consist of, what's cried. going on now? How she does turned it... around, she looked at me with tears in her eyes. I'm never... Married to culture. And what can we do about it? I want to go to 1 Corinthians, uh, no, I'm sorry, I want to go to 2 Peter 1, 21, Spencer, 2 Peter 1, 21. For no prophecy is ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Prophecy was never produced by the will of man. It never came from man, folks. Prophecy comes from God. That's number one. Number two, 1 Corinthians 14, 3. The one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. Let me say that again. The one who prophesies speaks to people to build them up, to encourage, to console. And that's why it broke my heart when I saw the lady in the, in the, in the alley. And I'm not saying it was my fault, but I feel like it was an angel in a dream telling me, David, you have to dissect this, dissect this. We need, there are people out there that are scared. They don't know what to do. And perhaps you're one of them. Perhaps I'm one of them. But prophecy is a noun. To prophesy is a verb. That's the difference between prophecy and prophesy. Prophecy is a noun. Prophes prophesy is a verb. But to prophesy is to simply pronounce prophecy. So if someone prophesies, they're just bringing forth prophecy. Prophecy is the fundamental meaning. It, it's a message for God. That's basically, you know, beginning, middle, and end. I want to talk to my guest tonight, Everett Triplett. And what I want to do is I want to go, and I, we're going to and ask Everett to, because Everett's, a, 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 he's like an encyclopedia. And when I read encyclopedias, my mind explodes. And I asked him, I said, listen, Everett, I'm going to I may have to stop you many times because because I got to put a pause so I can understand what you're saying. And uh, he's, he's very, been very uh, cordial in this. And Everett, you there with me, buddy? Yes. All right. Yeah. Everett, I want to talk to you. First of all, are there prophets today? I know there were prophets in the Bible, but is there prophets today? Well, the body, the Holy Spirit gives many gifts to men. And it does list prophets along with teachers, preachers, evangelists, uh, healing, words of knowledge. There's gifts, including prophets. So, yes, God does speak to men and tell men to, to tell other men what God says. Okay, but it's not like prophets in the Old Testament. Those were, those were appointed, uh, obviously, to be a part of God's instruction, the Bible. Uh, this is this the prophecy is different than prophets. The prophets of the Bible were the prophets God assigned. Now people that carry forth prophecy, they are prophets, but they're not the same prophets in the Bible, right? 
Well, I don't know. It could be a fine line. I, I, all I, you've heard the old expression on the kids playing on the playground. It takes one to know one. Well, I know what these prophets are saying. I'm, I'm reading in Ezekiel 5, thus saith the Lord. Ezekiel 7, 5, this is what God says, or the sovereign Lord says. So God is speaking through his word. And every time we open the Bible, we can hear God speaking. If okay. you hear if you hear a word from the Lord, that's what the prophet said. Isaiah, Jeremiah, they said God, God would speak to them, and then they would tell the the community what God was saying. Okay, but there are gifts. Correct me, there are gifts. One of the gifts is prophecy. Does that mean that anyone can have this gift at any given time, or do you think these gifts are assigned to people individually? No, and God is the one who determines what gift to give to which men. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I want to go to Isaiah 3, 5 through 11, Spencer. Let's put up Isaiah 3, 5 through 11. I want to read this, and Everett, I want to talk to you about it. Um, People will oppress each other, man against man, neighbor against neighbor. The young will rise up against the old, the nobody against the honored. A man will seize one of his brothers and in his father's house and say, you have a cloak, Uh, you be our leader. Take charge of the heap of ruins. But in that day, he will cry out, I have no remedy. I have no food, no clothing in my house. Jerusalem staggers. Judah is falling. Their words and deeds are against the Lord, defying his glorious presence. Look at their faces, testifies against them. They parade their sin like Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to them. They have brought disaster upon themselves. Okay, now this is the part I want to read. Tell the righteous it will be well with them, for they will enjoy the fruit of their deeds. But woe to the wicked. Disaster is upon them. They will be paid back for what their hands have done. So, Everett, I want to ask you, you, I don't know what you're going to say about this, but the way I read it is we as true believers, the righteous, do not need to be fear the end times, the day of the Lord, because the righteous God will be with us. He will take care of us. But the wicked, whoa, they need to wake up and smell the coffee because they're going to be paid back for what they have done. Everett, do you agree? 100%. I'm understanding we, we serve a God who's full of mercy, compassion. He loves justice. And, and you were just talking about some <clears throat> some perversions about some uh, none or something. And I don't know. The wickedness is out there and it's become rampant. And so God's judgment is coming on the wicked. And he says to tell the righteous, the judgment's not coming on us. It's coming. He has, God has to stop what we see. In the Dubai, It's so wicked everywhere. They're like the mass genocide from the global elite, the, the premeditated mass murder, 9-11, Lahaina, Las Vegas country western concert shooting, the vaccine, the death shots, everything, the murdering of people, and they want to reduce human population. God sees the wickedness, and it says he's coming, and it's woe to the wicked. He's going to stop them. Right. So the first thing I want to say to people out there listening, you know, I had the dream about the little old lady who just felt alone and she was hurting is if she did exist, she doesn't accept in my dream, but it could have been an angel, is ma'am, you do not have to worry. If you're a child of God, God's going to take care of you. And I'm going to get into that a little bit deeper, um, <clears throat> Everett. I want to um, ask you, br- bring, bring this up, put, lay it on the table. Where are we now in these end times? You know, we and people are talking about through the Bible, but even you read in Scripture in end times, But according to Matthew 24, Jesus says something. Where are we, according to Matthew 24, in these end times? We're we're watching the nations rising up against the nations. We're in the birth pain process, like a nine-month pregnant woman who's gone full term and begins to have contractions. I'm thinking we're around eight or 10 hours of contractions are ongoing. They're intensifying as in military hostility escalates, nations are rising, the pressure is gonna get on, then the water breaks. I think we're close to the breaking of the water. Breaking of the water. And I'm gonna get into the four horsemen because as the water breaks, I went again, there's four, and there's four events going to happen. 
And <clears throat> Everett, when we come back, I want to talk to you about that. Okay, so don't you go away. We're talking to uh, Everett Trippett. We're talking about the end times. He's devoted his life to this. He's got some shocking things that he's going to say we did in the pre-interview. Spencer, let's go to DavidHevener.tv. I want to play. Uh, I, I want to play uh, the show on astral projection. That's under the uh, overcoming demonic powers. If you go to astral projection um, and go to uh, which one is it, uh, Spencer? It was uh, Satan Soldiers, right? With Russ Dizdar. So if you go under uh, Overcoming Demonic Powers, click Astral Projection, and you'll see the second one there. Let's go ahead and play that. A lot of these program multiples and victims of SRAs have been programmed and designed for astral projection. The Antichrist can do nothing without that. They have to have the soldiers to bring the chaos okay. all the way to Armageddon wow. to fight, to engage, to release curses. Do you believe now they're going to be making the move at any time. In other words, the stage is set. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we talked about earlier with Everett, and I'm going to bring him back on after the break here, but uh, we talked about, he mentioned the sh shooter in Vegas, and I, I did a lot of these videos on shooters. I think they're program multiples. I did a lot of research. Of course, I worked with Russ Dizdar, did a lot of interviews on him. Matter of fact, if you go to davidhavener.tv, Spencer, Look at the top. We've got a lot of channels here. And I know I show you all this, but there may be somebody new here that needs to see this. This is our private platform, over 900 videos. Yep. The rest is our tribute channel, uh, Davis Choice Channel, Spiritual Warfare, uh, Recommended, Alien Demon Connection. We have the Last Evangelist Channel, uh, Originals, Mind Control, uh, the Coming Holocaust, Bible Study Channel with Mike Spaulding. Uh, amazing warrior in Christ, uh, overcoming demonic powers, the podcast. Folks, let me tell you something. If you're not signed up to this platform, uh, you're really missing out because just for like 70 bucks a year, $6 a month, uh, le less than that, actually, you, you can be watching all this stuff. We have a live 24 seven live channel. So in other words, you can Watch things. Go up to top, Spencer, and click uh, schedule events. I'm sorry, watch live TV. Let's click that and go on there. You can see um, at certain times, certain things come on, right? So at 7 o'clock, we had testimonies and transformation. Uh, how could she for forgive such a horrific child abuse? Folks, I, I have all kinds of programs on here, and my heart is to to reach out to the abused, to the children, and not just the young children, but a lot of these children are um, older now that I, that I um, interview. And that's my heart. My heart is to, uh, to expose the darkness and talk about the things the church doesn't talk about. Anyway, when we come back, I'm going to be talking to Everett about the four horsemen. Where are we in this? Folks, we got like, and I, I'm going to say it right now, but I want you to listen to me. We got like five months to go before something, well, I, I don't want to get into it right now, but let's take a look at the commercial and we'll be right back. Don't forget about lastevangelist.com. You can go to that site. Uh, this is uh, episode two is about the vaccine. Um, episode three is about artificial intelligence. Folks, if you want to help me get the word out to Hollywood, to the atheists, to people that don't even know God, they don't know anything about this kind of stuff, this is a great mission field. So consider uh, donating. Uh, you can be an executive producer, you can be a producer, you can have a walk on roll, go pick up all the all this merchandise. It helps support and promote the ministry. Lastevangelist.com, you can go to that site. Life is complicated enough. Why worry about what to do with your extra car? Get the costs of maintaining it, storing it, insuring it, or renewing registration. Car repairs? Forget about it. Here's one easy solution to your car problem. Donate it to a nonprofit. It's fast, free, tax deductible, and if you donate, you're going to feel incredible knowing you're supporting a great cause. Interested? Just call this toll-free number or donate online. Thank you. Hey, everybody, we're back. I'm nursing a little cold here. Pray for me. Forgive me for being so hoarse. Sound like Joe Cocker. 
Um, hey, if you'd like to um, be prayed for, David at davidhebner.tv. If you'd like to uh, s- support the ministry financially, pray for us, davidhebner.tv forward slash give, or you can call 844-806-0006. Consider uh, making a donation. And also don't forget about the Last Evangelist TV series, DVD, episode one, and eight hours of footage on End Times Investigation. All of my friends that I've interviewed through the years, Russ Dizdar, Lisa Haven, uh, Mike Lake, it just goes on and on. You can uh, go to davidhevener.tv forward slash order. All right, we're talking about the end times. We're talking about what can we do with it. Let's dive into it. I've got my guest, um, Everett, here. We're going to talk about the four horsemen. Uh, Everett, each horseman represents an event, something that's going to happen. Let's take the first horse. Um, what does the first horse represent? Well, the, 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 the horsemen come out of the scroll that has seven seals, and those seals are breaking because the lamb breaks the seal, and the lamb is Jesus, and the breaking of the seals is what Jesus releases the horsemen, and the first one represents the thunder is a massive explosion event beginning with a nuclear bombing of the day of the Lord because it, the Lord is, it's the day the Lord releases his judgment on the wicked. And then the fires are burning because it's harvest time and you're watching tares, which are the sons of the devil in Matthew 13. The sons of the devil are the ones who are gathered in bundles to be burned when, the, when it's harvest time at the end of the age where we are. Okay, so, um, and when you said the birth pains, or scripture says birth pains, the breaking of the water when a woman has a baby, and then I heard the breaking of the seal. This sounds like it kind of coincides, um, uh, it, right? Yeah, you're 100% spot on because women will tell you when that water breaks, the pain becomes far more excruciating. So we're watching the nations rising against the nations, but in the last week, the there's NATO just announced 31 nations are engaging in a exercise called Steadfast Defender 2024, where 90,000 troops and 31 NATO member nations are joining into a into a simulated emerging conflict with a nearby peer, which is Russia, and it, and it's uh, it continues through May. So that's yeah. for the next four, three or four months of war exercises. As, well, so we're watching escalating <clears throat> military hostility, which is prophetically described as increasing contractions with increasing pressure on the sac of amniotic fluid does cause the sealed the sealed sac of fluid mm-hmm. breaks the water breaks the seals are breaking it's what? exactly what we're what witnessing okay. we're moving in that direction yeah and so that takes me to horse number two uh in the four horsemen we're talking about an all-out war are we talking about world war three uh everett and could this be against the United States from the Al- from the uh, NATO that you're talking about? It is absolutely because the second horse that has the red sword, the red depicts the bloodshed. The sword says it takes peace from the earth. That's a simple statement that means war has broken out. Full-fledged, all-out war has begun because the first horse's thunder is the exploding nuclear bombs, and a bombing starts a war. Wow. And you know what? This kind of makes sense because, you know, I'm telling everybody, I did a show on this a couple weeks ago, I don't see how, and I don't want to get into election or politics, but I don't see how we can make it through this election because neither side's going to be happy. And I think they're just going to give up the ghost, if you know what I'm saying, on both sides. They're not. They're going to think it's over. And so what happens, you have this civil unrest, this civil war. And because of that, America's caught off guard. And that would be a time that the bear, this would be a time that NATO 
this would be a time to be attacked by an, an outside force. Does that, that make any sense? Yeah, it, we are in the Daniel chapter 7 timeline also. And another way to look at it is the first beast in Daniel 7 was the lion with wings of the eagle. And the lion represents United Kingdom. Eagle represents United States. Together, we represent a world power. And then it says Tony Blair, George Bush announced war on terror 19 years ago. Trump announced the war on terror is over. Uh, time to bring the troops home. We're watching Russia rising. That's the bear. So we're in the transition where the time of the first beast is ending, where where the lion and the eagle, the United States and England together are, are going to be who is attacked because the four horsemen have power and authority to kill on one quarter of the earth. Wow, wow. Now, you know, and I want to touch on that in just a second, but you know, you, we talked about the civil unrest within the United States, the Western world. Um, they don't really, there's no one side against the other. And, and we talked earlier, you had mentioned they don't have uniforms. Like in the Civil War, there was the North and the South, you had the gray and the blue. Right now, it's just good against evil. And are we just fighting demons? In other words, it's a demonic war. These people are are possessed. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at some of the, some of these people are saying Everett, and I'm going, they can't, they're taking over. They can't be in the right mind. Yeah, it is. It is totally uh, scripturally, and it's spiritual because Satan is the ruler of this world, the global elite. We have seen videos of them worshiping. 40 foot owl statue at the bohemian grove where they're dressed like Ku klux klan robes and they're there's a, a loudspeaker saying oh owl of bohemia we beseech thee grant us thy counsel these global elite who worship money money is the root of all evil and satan told jesus when he fasted 40 days and came in to he tempted him if you'll bow down and worship me i'll give you all the kingdoms of the world you could be the ruler of the world well jesus did not accept that offer but these global elite rothschilds sources Gil, bill gates these people are ruling the world because they are in Satan's kingdom, like the Illuminati or the triangle on the $1 bill with the eye at the top. Satan, Lucifer rules this world until Jesus returns at the end of seven years. It does say that in Daniel 7, the fourth beast is waging war against the saints until the Ancient of Days arrives, pronounces judgment in favor of the saints. And the time comes when they take possession of the kingdom. The kingdom is being born. The birth pains give birth to God's kingdom of heaven on this earth. Isaiah 2 says, never again will men train for war. Nations okay. won't rise up against nations anymore. Our enemies are going to be completely and totally destroyed permanently. Okay. So I want to ask you, we're on the third horse now. The third horse represents the fall of the economy, the downfall of the monetary system. Um, but before I ask you that, Zechariah 13, 8. Um, Spencer, put up Zechariah 13, 8, because Everett, you touched on this. Uh, Zechariah 13, 8. In the whole land, declares the Lord, two thirds will be struck down and perish, yet one third will be left in it. Um, that one third is, is the, the righteous, God's people. Will this happen, Zechariah 13, happen before the economy collapse or after, before the fourth horseman? Where do you see this happening? I, I, that is also described in Ezekiel chapter 5, where it says one third of your people being the house of Israel, not worldwide. One third of your people will perish in the cities of famine and plague. Another third will perish in the country by the sword. But uh, the one third who survived, they're, they're mentioned also in Ezekiel 7. Ezekiel 5 and Ezekiel 7 kind of repeat each other but with a little additional information meaning it says all who survive will be in the mountains which is the one third that's left in it and you want to continue to read zechariah 13 8 and read zechariah 13 9 and 10 because it does say the third that's left are god's people right but does this happen you think before or after the the third and fourth horsemen 
this is what's happening. See the the four horsemen bring the four judgments that are mentioned in Ezekiel five nine. Okay. And that that begins with it says, "Thus saith the Lord, I'm coming to inflict punishment on you." And then it says, "Because of the abominations in the land, detestable idols." Or because of the wickedness, because of the blood drinking, adrenochromes, child sex trafficking, Epstein Island, because of the the vaccine, the shots, the global elite, the yeah. wickedness. God's right, right. judgment okay. comes I, on the wicked. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. I want to hit on uh, three, and then I want to hit four because we're going to run out of time. So three is the down is the collapse of the economy. Do you see this um, happening uh, worldwide? Number one, number two. Do you see it happening rather soon? see this happening like matthew 24 says when summer's near it's right at the door that's like 90 days away oh. and i see oh. it on a fourth of the earth it's okay always the four horsemen are always on one quarter of the earth okay that brings us to horse number four the plague um what do you see with that what type of plague what do you, what do you see uh, as the plague Plague is always radiation sickness. That's why it says in Ezekiel 5 and Ezekiel 7, the famine and plague are in the city, but the, the, the sword is in the country, meaning the plague is not spreading into the country. It's not contagious. There's no sword in the city because there's no one fighting in the streets in a city that has glowing radiate, deadly radiation everywhere. Yeah. But they, in the city, they are trapped in a subway or in a in a parking car garage basement they they begin to run out of food they're going to die of the famine but if they if they want to try to go forage for food out in the street then this the radiation on the surface will uh, they will die of the radiation sickness which yeah. is described in Deuteronomy 28 where it says these curses will come on a nation that turns away from God. He'll smite them with a wasting disease, fever, inflammation, scorching heat and drought and blight and mildew, sores, boils, tumors, and itch from which there is no cure. Mm -hmm. This thing plays out like a, like a script. Um, the four horsemen is like a step outline. Uh, Everett, when I write a script, I teach how to do a step outline first. This is God's step outline to tell us exactly what's going on. The first horseman is the day of the Lord, a nuclear or some type of assault uh, by the enemy. We talked about that coming from the bear and from NATO against the United States. Two is an all out, all out World War III. And within that, we have civil unrest with a lot of demons uh, you know, within the United States. We talked about, you talked about uh, these shootings and so forth. I talk about them as being programmed multiples. These people are programmed because it's demonic. Number three is the collapse of, uh, uh, collapse of the economy. Because when people go into the stores, there's no food, they're gonna freak out. And then comes the famine because the economy is collapsed. But now I wanna talk about, uh, before we go to break, I wanna give people hope. Um, it says go to the mountains. Now, Everett, there's people that can't go to the mountains it says to stock up on food. I'm sure most everyone can stock up on food, but they can't go to the mountains. And you're saying, unless you go to the mountains, it's going to be a tough ride. Is that right? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm analyzing all the scriptures. I've found four different places where it does mention mountains, mountain fortresses. See the stories. One of the most important ways of looking at prophecy is first Corinthians 10, 11 tells us all the stories in Israel's history serve as examples for those of us upon whom the end is coming. And you want to look at Judges chapter 6. said so the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord for seven years. He turned them over to the hands of the Midianites. They invaded their land. Their land was invaded without number. So the Israelites went up into the mountain caves and mountain clefts and strongholds. Okay. It's, gotcha. it's in the mountains well, there. Yeah. It's in well, it, Matthew 24 says, flee to the mountains when you see the abomination that causes desolation. I have determined from many scriptures there's going to be the bombing of a nation. It is the bombing of a nation. 
that the first horse is that follows open begins the war stops the economy because the emp electromagnetic pulse it's in isaiah 33 highways are deserted no travelers on the road people burned to lime it's nuclear yep. It, and, but it's God's plan. But the Isaiah 310, which you started this program with, where it said, tell the righteous it'll be well with them. It, it, we want to focus on what it said next. It said, they, the righteous, will enjoy the fruit of their deeds. There you go. Our I want to stop it at that. Um, hang on one second, Everett, because we've got to take a hard break here. Uh, when we come back, I'm going to pick up on that. I'm going to pick up what can people expect? What happens if you can't go to the mountains? What about the food? What about the stock buying? We're going to get in, folks, what you and I can do. Okay, so I want you to stay with me. We'll be right back. In these last days, people will worship false gods. As the Antichrist arises, Christians will be persecuted. David Hevner Investigates is proud to bring you End Times Investigations, a new DVD series containing over eight hours of interviews, commentaries, and teaching on Illuminati and the New World Order, Satanism, miracles and healings, the Antichrist and One World Religion. Hi, I'm David Hevener, and I'm proud to bring you this brand new DVD collection, End Times Investigations. David reveals how the media is working hand in hand with the Antichrist system. Order now and receive this special DVD collection. Text bonus to 41444 or davidhevner.tv slash order. Call toll free 844-806-0006. Text bonus to 41444 or davidhevner.tv slash order. Call toll free 844-806-0006. Hey everybody, David here. Hey, don't forget the DVD order. It helps the ministries and these two books, Story of My Life uh, in Hollywood, the Hollywood Mind Control and SRA and Program Multiples and everything. This is uh, how to use your, um, your, your, your true power in these last days. So I want you to, um, if you can, order those books, David at davidhevener.tv forward slash um, order or you can call 844-806-0006 or you can text the word chosen to 91999 and uh we're going to bring everett back on in just a moment before we do i'm bring my wife on shanita shanita how are you doing fantastic thank you good 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 hey um before i forget it you know we ran into the people that we do the car commercial on there's been people that's donated their car and uh their trailers and stuff and we're so thankful for the people it's blessed the ministry it's blessed the people that do the cars because they also are a ministry and uh i just wanted to remind you guys that if you want to call 855 500 ride and uh just mention david hevener uh dot tv slash car right shanita right mm -hmm. yeah there you go all right any praise reports any prayer requests Yes. You know, a couple of years ago, Melissa reached out for prayer for her son. When he took off to college, she ended up doing drugs. Well, uh, she asked us to pray for him. And now for the past two years, he has been in recovery and is attending church and Bible study. So we're just blessing the Lord. I'm so grateful. Yes. That Praise God. God. Yeah. And I, we went to a, a, a conference and I had a guy chase me down in the hallway. He said, David, last year you prayed for me and you all prayed for me and I was healed. I went home and I was healed. He had been sick for so long. And I want to say this thing because I want God to have all the glory. Right. Uh, awesome. OK. Any prayer requests? We do have some prayer requests and I think more are coming in. So. All right, I tell you will. what, I'll bring you on after uh, we finish up with Everett. I'll bring you back on for the prayer requests, okay? okay. All right, love you. Um, Shanita, uh, okay, Everett, uh, I want to talk about what can people do. First of all, they can get some food and beans. They can get beans and rice, um, things that are, you know, not going to go bad on you. Um, no TV dinners, please. Uh, and uh, But they can't go to the mountains. But I want to... I want to say something, Everett, before I ask you this question. If, God's, if God is telling his people to enjoy the fruits 
of, of uh, you know, it, it's Ezekiel 7, uh, I'm sorry, Zechariah 13, 9, this third will put into fire and will refine them like silver and test them like gold. They will call on my name and I'll answer them. I will say, you are my people. And they will say, the Lord is our God. And you said earlier for the break that they're going to enjoy. There's going to be an enjoyment. They're going to God's people. Well, Everett, do you think God could take them supernaturally and put them in a safe place? Well, you know, I believe that we, we will be enjoying the fruit of our deeds, meaning we will be having food to eat. When, when uh, the wicked are starving and famine is in the land, King David said he was young, now he's old. He's never seen God's people begging for bread. God is giving us instructions of what to do. There's a disaster coming, but he's telling us it's coming on the wicked. He's telling his people to follow his instructions. Ezekiel 4, 9 says, get for yourself 390 days supply, wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, spelt i've bought a lot of stuff i bought crusty's pancake mix i bought uh you know <laughs> I, I bought a lot of lentils i bought split peas dry well, any gonna, kind of dry Edward, i'm coming to live with you so i'm gonna know where you are and we've been trying to decide we're moving the studio so i'm just gonna find out where you are and i'm gonna no listen um so this puts on a light jesus fed the thousands with small fish and small loaves he supernaturally fed people ever. Uh, manna fell from heaven when the Israelites were delivered from the Egyptians. It was a supernatural event. And you know what I got when you were talking? It's just God wants us to prepare, but God is going to supply our needs. And I think you touched on it. He's going to feed us. You know, we can't just sit around and go, okay, God, I'm going to wait for you to feed. We got to do everything we can. He takes care of his people. Okay. Um, now, I, we, we only have a few minutes here before we take a break and you're going to stay with us, but we're going to go what we call underground and on David TV and Roku and Amazon and Apple. But I want to ask you this question before we take a break. The, the earth, the earth will be in disarray. Okay. The earth will be a mess, but you say, and I believe, that there will be a renewing of the earth. And this is where we're gonna live, Everett, in this renewing? Yes, we're looking forward to the new heaven, the new earth. This is we're to look forward to the coming day of the Lord, understanding it's how God fulfills his promise of bringing about the new heaven, the new earth. Although it brings about the destruction of the ungodly men, it's gonna, we're gonna, we're looking forward to the earth becoming the home of the righteous. <clears throat> awesome. Okay, I want you to stay with me. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you, Everett, when you think all this is going to take place. Of course, you know, you're a man, I'm a man, we're all just humans, but I'm going to ask you that. You take a lot of your guidance information from Scripture. I can just tell you, folks, it's around the corner, but when we come back, I'm going to have Everett dive deep into it so we know uh, what to do. And also, when we come back, you can call in and talk to Everett Talk to me. You can make comments, uh, but you can only do it if you're a member of David Heavener TV. So, Everett, stay with us. We'll be back with you in just a minute, buddy. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, so, Shanita, you out there with me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, if people want to sign up to David Heavener TV and go underground with us, because I think this is going to be a really good underground. We're going to talk about some things that are really going to help people. How can they sign up right now, uh, and how can they get a link to go underground? When they go to davidhavener.tv, they'll see a place to sign up. And then if they'll just send an email or text, then I'll be able to send them the link for tonight. But from then on, they'll have access every week. Okay, have access. And we have over 900 videos on there. We mm -hmm. have uh, live television now. Uh, the 24-7 uh, channel, and uh, I'm excited about that. Okay, prayer request. Yes, um, baby Jaden is a newborn, and he is suffering and not, not improving. And we're praying for one of our members with a broken heart and for Sherry dealing with hip issues. 
and for Lori's prodigal daughter. And I think there are more coming in as we're speaking. So we will be giving those to our prayer warriors. We meet to pray every Friday. Yes. Yeah. Shanita, you mentioned that little baby. Uh, when was the baby born? I feel like recently, but I don't have a date. Okay. What, what's Jayden. the baby's name? Jaden. Jaden. Okay. And also, I want to pray for that little baby, that little um, baby in uh, Gaza, a Palestinian mm -hmm. baby that starved to death, a newborn, mm -hmm. basically, because they couldn't get food there. And I know the reason they don't take food there is that Hamas takes, and they don't treat those people right. They take the food and they take it for themselves, and people blame it on the U.S., but that's another story. But I want to pray for that for the family of that baby too. And I want to pray um, for little Jaden, because I believe um, God's going to heal this baby. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Every word that came out of Shanita's mouth, each person that needs prayer, Father, you know those names. I'm asking right now that you meet each and every need. Touch them. We pray for baby Jaden. We ask for a healing right now. We're commanding that healing, that that baby supernaturally is healed right now so that the family, the mother and father says, wow, a miracle just happened. Lord, I pray for the family of that little baby that passed on. I pray that somehow your word, the Holy Spirit can touch that family. I don't know if they're, I know they're Palestinian. I don't know if uh, they're Muslim or Christians because there's both mixed there, but I'm asking, Father, you comfort them. Be with them. There's someone out there listening to me right now that's having problems with their teeth. I'm commanding a healing right now. Someone's having stomach problems. I'm commanding a healing. There's someone that actually is estranged from their family. Lord, I'm asking for a restoration on that family. We thank you for your word tonight, and you're not done speaking. You've just begun. Thank you for protecting us and not letting the, the, the evil demonic censorship come in and take us out. Lord, we still have a voice, and we praise you for that. And I thank you, Lord, for our followers, for our gatherers, for our family that has stayed with us and prayed with us. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us going one more day. That's all we can ask, one day at a time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, folks, we're going to... Um, sign off here on social media will be on david hevner tv our membership platform will be on roku amazon apple tv it's the only way you'll be able to see the rest of our gathering here i, I really want you to be part of the family would you consider signing up uh go to david tv all right i love you guys uh, if you'd like to support the ministry david tv forward slash give if you'd like to support last evangelist episode two it's coming out we need to finish up the funding on that, lastevangelist.com. All right, love you guys, and we'll uh, catch you on the flip side. God bless you. Hey, everybody. Well, this concludes our time together. If you'd like to support the ministry, please go to davidhevener.tv forward slash give or call 844-806-0006 or text the word CHOSEN to 91999. Don't forget to share this broadcast, and I love you.